All right, all right. I'm going to share my screen now. Um, and I'm going to share with you a project called Remote Pipeline Test Framework. I hope you can see the readme file. Um, this project, if I was to describe it in four words, it's, uh, it's a tool to trigger pipelines and make assertions. So it lets you have end-to-end -end testing for pipelines that you author. Uh, why would you want this? Mm, you would say that as a GitLab pipeline author, uh, your pipeline probably gets used across a varied number of projects under different configs, right? So those configs could be branches, tags, var, source files. It all could be different across the different projects that your pipeline is getting used. And your pipeline understands this context and responds accordingly, uh, which might mean that the pipeline itself should have a different expected status, should have different number of stages, different number of jobs, Job statuses can be different. Artifacts may or may not be produced. Environments may or may not be provisioned. You could be, you could, think you could have a lot of scenarios. Uh, the idea is that uh, as a template author or a pipeline author, you want to have solid test cases to make sure that the pipeline behaves as it's expected to. So uh, we have this uh, tool called Remote Pipeline Test Framework. Uh, you're seeing a lot of snake art over here, and two reasons pipelines are kind of like snakes and that this tool is written in Python. So I thought it's only appropriate to have this. So uh, being written in Python, you can install it via pip. So if you do pip install RPTF, you get this locally on your machine and you can execute it. Uh, but before you execute, you're supposed to write your test cases. And those are typically done in a file called rptf.yaml. Uh, here's a quick example. Each block here is a test case. A test case has two parts. Uh, the first is the trigger part. So you specify which project's pipeline you want to trigger. Um, you pass branch or tags or things like that if you, if you have a special branch to work with. And then you make a series of assertions. So um, that's the rough idea of what, what's been built. Uh, you can, of course, not just run it locally, but you can run it as part of a GitLab pipeline itself. So a pipeline that tests some other pipelines. Um, the only thing you need for this to work is a GitLab access token with the right permissions. And of course, uh, a little bit of a detailed example of what you can do when it comes to authoring tests. So trigger part is easy. So you can have a trigger uh, for a project ID. By default, the branch would be master, uh, but you can specify the specific branch that you want to work with as well. Uh, this is actually a ref. So it also can be a tag name or a commit. Mm, uh, and if you look at the second section, that is assertions, you can assert for pipeline status, the number of jobs you expect the pipeline to have, individual status of each of the jobs. So that's the dict over here, or the number of artifacts or environment statuses of the environments that are uh, provisioned. Uh, it's a CLI based tool, of course. So here's some CLI options. And I'm gonna quickly switch for a demo that I haven't rehearsed. So this can go pretty wrong, but I hope it does not. Uh, give me 30 seconds to set this up, please. Uh, let's see. Do you see my terminal? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is it too small? Let me just increase this. I think it probably this. is a bit small. Yeah. Let me just tweak the size. On a Mac, just command plus. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Noobs need tools like that. Uh, okay, so I don't remember where I have three projects remote. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install it locally. And since I already have it installed, I'm going to upgrade my installation. And there was a typo. So it's, oh, 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 all right. Okay, so I have the latest version, which means I have my tool available locally. Uh, what I also have is a YAML file, right? So if I look at my RPTF YAML file here, you can see that I've got few jobs defined. Uh, first job, it's supposed to trigger a pipeline with three jobs and should succeed. Second job, three jobs again. Uh, second test, three jobs again, uh, pipeline should fail with the just test failing. And third is that two jobs and it should be a success. So uh, executing this is pretty simple. I do RPTF and uh, it starts triggering pipelines um, on these three projects. It gives me the URL of these pipelines back. And this is the part of uh, the demo where we just sit and wait. So uh, if anybody has any questions of what they've seen so far, I'm happy to answer them.
I do have one. Yes. So normally within a project, you uh, strive to keep the master green, but obviously people tend to destroy things every now and then. In the ideal use case for RPTF, is it like you maintain a special branch to provide data for testing and you keep it steady? And how do you make sure that the, you are actually testing pipeline, not the data in the project? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, I think ideally you would expect your pipeline to fail in certain situations. Uh -huh. um, right. And this is this could be like just a test project out there or a test branch out there, which is configured in a way that the pipeline should fail. Um, but then you want to assert that it's failing for the right reasons. I mean, it should fail for the reason that you expect it to fail. Um, so this lets you, uh, I would say the way I'm using it is that I have a main pipeline template project that I'm working on. And then I've got other projects at the side. Uh, which have got uh, many branches. Some of them should succeed. Some of them should fail. Um, and my main project contains my test case. So the main project contains the RPTF YAML, uh, which points to these other projects as test cases. So it triggers pipelines over there and expects those to fail. So I, of course, I don't want my main project pipeline to fail because RPTF itself is part of the main project pipeline. And if the and if it asserts a failure where there should be a failure, uh, RPTF job actually passes. So uh, that's the setup that I've been using it in. Uh, it's a pretty flexible tool. So in theory, it can trigger the pipeline in the same project that you're hosting it in. So you can use RPTF to trigger pipelines of the same project in different branches. Uh, but that's just something that I have not used so far, but there's no reason why you can't do that. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Uh, Sri, uh, I've got a question. So uh, if I understand uh, the approach correctly, so it's sort of a JUnit framework for pipelines or something? Yeah, like that is... Uni unit testing? Yeah, that is a good starting point. It is a testing framework. I wouldn't say it is unit testing because it actually triggers the real pipelines. So I would... So, you know, like when you're, running, uh, when you're running tests, you either test small parts of the code or you mock some of the services, but mm -hmm. it's not like a real thing. This is a real thing. It triggers a pipeline. So you want to make sure that your test assumes that the pipeline is going to be triggered and executed. So be careful of what you test and where you test. Sometimes you want to test something without triggering the pipeline. Then you would not use this then you would probably rely on the unit testing, the shell script or whatever script you have in your pipeline. Um, I hope okay, that was because, clear. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because why I'm asking, I'm just thinking about uh, use cases. I could use that framework. And if you could tell a little bit more about the use cases when where this becomes applicable, that yeah. would be absolutely wonderful, right? Because I yeah. understand uh, what it does, uh, but I'm not clearly getting the use case. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a fair question. So just imagine that you are uh, you are part of a DevOps team in a large organization, and your team or you are responsible for creating pipelines for many other teams out there. And you want to test your pipelines that they work as expected. So you want to automate the testing part. You're a pipeline template author. You're responsible for writing pipeline templates for a lot of other teams, and you want to make sure they behave the right way. Um, that's one use case. Another possible use case is basically pipelines are automation, right? And you want to have, let's say, you probably have recurring pipelines every X days, X weeks, whatever. Uh, you want to make sure they're doing what they're doing. Uh, we have a simple approach of a pipeline failure, but then can you go deeper in your assertions? Can you assert which job of the pipeline has failed and why? Can you assert whether it's created the artifacts it's supposed to create or not? Things like that. So when you want to have deeper control. Uh, my personal story with this was that I was, uh, I was writing the five minute production thing and I did not have a good way to test it. I really did not have a nice way of asserting uh, how the pipeline should behave across different branches, different environments, different settings. So for me, it was like, I'm a, I'm, I was a pipeline template author. I wanted to test thoroughly what my pipeline does under different contexts. Uh, okay, and uh, just last question here. Uh, as far as we are uh, talking about the framework, do you have any uh, particular plans to extend in the frameworks, um, for example, in terms of parameterizing the execution? 
So it becomes actually a uh, test case driven. So uh, let me just explain and give you a little bit more context here. So let's say you, um, now you, you define the outcome pretty much um, uh, hard coded, right? In, in the pipeline definition. So expected results. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just thinking about introducing some sort of a variable. So because when you want to assert how the pipeline uh, is executed under certain conditions, you want to be able to parameterize it, right? Somehow. And uh, based on those parameters, you want to see the outcome and assert that outcome. So uh, my question is, do you have any particular plans to extend this framework down to that? Because I think that might be very interesting actually testing your pipeline and asserting uh, the outcome based on the input data. I agree. Dynamic. I, I, I agree. So uh, there's a lot that can be extended upon here. Um, you know, uh, I think Vladimir Salbo also had some good ideas earlier last week. Uh, there are, there, that's a lot we can do. This is basically, you know, pipelines are automation and this is like an automation testing framework. So uh, the roadmap in theory could be great. Uh, I've just released the first version, make it available to this kind of feedback and then based on which direction it should go, it will. Thank you for that. Okay, well, uh, it, 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 it's great. I think it, it has a, a great potential, right? So. Uh, the only thing that I'm thinking of, what I would want to see is actually the mocking part. Because in this case, that would be absolutely fantastic tool. If you could just mock out uh, certain things, because now it creates everything, right? It runs a pipeline. So uh, what I would yeah. ask you to do is like, if you can, um, if you can um, create an issue, I will send you a link or I will show you a link as part of this demo uh, to the project. And if you can just uh, create an issue describing what you mean by this, like when, what you yeah. mean by mocking, yeah. okay. it'll, it'll be great. It'll give me a good idea. Okay, perfect. Anyway, uh, thank that. you for that. Yeah, thank you for those questions. Uh, while I was answering them, uh, the pipeline actually executed. So let's just quickly have a look at what happened. Um, it's We had these three test cases, right? So for each of the test cases, it triggered three pipelines. Um, so sorry, for each, it triggered one pipeline. So a total of three pipelines were triggered and then for a long time, it was just waiting to see <clears throat> the pipeline finish execution. So this stage, it's just waiting to see the pipeline finish execution. And then once the pipelines finished executing, it made all the assertions. So it made three types of assertions. It made assertions on pipeline status, job count, and job statuses itself. Uh, that's a quick demo of the execution of the CLI. I will quickly bring your attention back to... Uh, Let's see, uh, back to the readme uh, where I can walk you through the rest of the readme. We saw the test output in detail. I'm just gonna skip through this part. Um, FYI, this tool creates a JUnit compatible format if it has got failing tests, which means that I can specify the JUnit report in my GitLab CI YAML, which means it integrates nicely with merge requests. So here's an example of a merge request, um, which has got some failing tests uh, failing RPTF tests, and I can expand, and I can. It is telling me that hey, listen, it's got three failed tests, uh, nicely and deeply integrated into my MR workflow. Uh, I can view the full report, which takes me to my pipeline page. I select my test tool, and then I can select particular tests that I want to see the details for. That's that. Uh, what else do I have? Yeah, finally is the contributing section. So a lot of you have a lot of good ideas. Uh, the URL of the project is uh, is shared in the document. You have that. Uh, please add issues, tickets, contributions, suggestions, documentation, these kind of things, uh, more than welcome. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, happy to take any questions if there are any. Right, thank you. Sorry, Gronk, this went a bit longer than five minutes. Looks cool. That's uh, very cool. Awesome. I've um, I've just created an issue to consider renaming branch to ref if it actually is one. Makes it um, eventually more obvious that. Uh, that <clears throat> yes. Yes. More obvious and more compatible with the way we do multi-project pipelines in the GitLab CI YAML. So that's a good point. I had it somewhere as well. But yes, valid. Yeah, great stuff. 
Anything else? I do stop recording. Ooh.